Hi, I'm Adrian Jeffries and welcome to the Blackline Leisure Centre here in Gillingham in Kent. This weekend we hope to introduce you to on-road touring car racing, in carpet, indoors. Now most drivers who race touring cars indoor on carpet do so at small halls or community centres. So when a chance comes along to race on a big track, most drivers grasp that opportunity with both hands. And this is a big track. The majority of touring car races in the UK are divided into different classes. We have the 27 turn, 19 turn and 5 cell brushless. 27 turn is generally the slower class, um, but very good to watch and encourages close racing for people who are just starting in the sport. 19 turn, the next step up, slightly quicker motors. Both the 27 turn and the 19 turn run on 6 cell batteries. Once you've mastered that, you can move up to the five cell brushless class. As it says, it's only five cells, so you have one cell less, but you have a much more powerful motor. Okay, well we've seen the cars at high speed on the track. We've talked about the different classes. There's a chance to take a look at the car close up. I have with me Lee Woodhams, a Team CML. Uh, this is a Yokomo touring car. Yes. Uh, Lee, take the shell off and show us a little bit about what goes on under the bodywork of a current touring car. Okay, um, as you say, this is a Yokomo four wheel drive touring car. Um, we call it a BD Chris Granger edition. Um, it's, it's fairly out of the box. We have um, a solid solid spool we call it at the front um, and a, a ball differential in the back um, it's permanent four-wheel drive we have five cell battery pack the brushless modified motor this one we're running the spectrum system it doesn't run on normal megahertz it runs yeah. on almost bluetooth technology um, so no need for a crystal basically. no need for a crystal yeah we've got fully independent suspension everything's adjustable the the wheelbase the ride height the shock preload it's it's completely adjustable um, and has the Yokomo been good today? Have you done okay? It's not doing too bad today. Where um, are you after today's qualifying? We're fifth at the minute. Oh, that's just very good. Um, yeah. We had a bit of a mishap going down the straight in the last <laughs> qualifier. Um, but other than that, it's going really good. So, um, yeah. so Speed's good. Good. We've got run round of qualifying tomorrow. Are you going to change the car much for the slightly colder track in the morning? Or do you think that's qualifying done for? I food? think that's qualifying done. Yeah, I think a few people feel like that. It's going yeah. to be a cold, possibly damp air in the morning. Yeah. And very yeah. few people will struggle to improve. So. With mm. no practice as well in the morning. Everybody yeah. going themselves yeah. cold into yeah. the race. From qualifying, we'll go on to finals. Will you change the car much for the final? No. Yep, just no, exactly the same setup. Exactly and, the same. Yeah. I normally find the car runs better in the finals anyway. Yeah. Probably because yeah. you're not leaning on it as hard. Yeah. Um, you're only racing the car in front of you instead of the clock. Yeah. So you know how much faster you've got to go instead of pushing yeah. it all the time. So. Slightly different style of driving in the finals to qualifying? Yeah, again, yeah, I tend to. Yeah. I tend to drive a bit closer to the curves yeah. because if you don't want to let anybody up the inside. Exactly. Um, yeah. Whereas in qualifying, I tend to send a little bit often because um, you can lose more than you gain. As well as the car, you also need a range of kits to go with that to uh, charge your batteries, etc. We're going to have a chat now to Ollie Jeffries, and uh, Ollie's going to talk us around his array of kit that we got here. So, starting with the left Ollie, what's, uh, what have we got there? Uh, tire warmers, which obviously warm the tires, you can change them from 40 degrees to 100 degrees, but we only use, use it around about 40 degrees because any hotter it'll just sort of kill the tyre. That's a discharge tray that discharges each individual uh, cell. Um, you need that to get the most performance out of your batteries. Uh, the chargers also discharge but they only do it across the whole battery. Um, that's quite important to have. Uh, power supply which just powers everything. Um, they're pretty good, they'll run quite a lot of chargers and discharges, tyre warmers. Two chargers. 
usually I'll always have one just for charging my race cells and then you can use the other one for if you want to try anything for discharge cells or just check them. Um, fan keeping the cells cool, uh, that's plugged into the side of the charger and you can adjust it to what temperature you want it to come on at. Um, so if you're racing in a really hot condition you can set it to come on straight away or if it's cold you can set it to come on a lot later. Um, set up board, you need that so you can set all your car up on a flat surface. Um, if you're doing a ride out or droop or anything, it's all on a flat surface. If you do it in a, on a towel or on a board, it just doesn't, doesn't do it very accurately. Um, parts tray, just keeping any sort of body clips, pinions, any parts in there, saves it getting knocked onto the floor. Uh, toolbox, keep all your tools in. Tire additives, different tire additives do different things. We've got probably too many different tire additives to try, but we always tend to use sort of two or three. Another part tray I use just to keep my tools in again, just to stop it rolling onto the floor, or getting knocked off by somebody else. Car, uh, car stand, need one of those just so you can work on your car a little bit easier. Um, a little bit higher, so your car's not always on the suspension. Um, now you've got quite an elaborate array of kit there, Ollie. Uh, if you were just starting in the sport, you obviously wouldn't need uh, such a, a big array of, of equipment. What was what sort of the basics you would need if you were just starting off? Um, obviously a power supply, because that powers everything. Um, charger, and probably a discharger. Um, it doesn't just give you more performance, but it also affects uh, how long your batteries last. Um, if you just run and then charge your batteries back up, if they're not fully empty, um, they'll get really hot and it'll kill the life of the cell or that will just help it last longer and give you more performance so probably power supply charger and discharger are the main things you don't need that it's only just again for a little bit more performance um, and obviously tire warmers are just performance of the tire um, obviously the higher you go the more you need to help with performance so, so everything is is aimed to increase the ultimate performance of the car yeah All the tyres we're using today are a controlled tyre. It's the same tyre, wheel and insert for every single driver at the meeting today. Control tyre is something that's been introduced to national racing quite recently. Um, this tyre is a VTEC 27 supplied by Horizon Hobbies and I'm delighted to have with me multiple world champion Dave Spasher right. representing Horizon Hobbies today. Dave, controlled tyres, is that the way to go? Um, most definitely. Um, not just because us as a supplier, but just for the good of the hobby. Yeah. Um, when a racer goes to the racetrack, he knows he will have exactly the same traction level as his competitor sitting next to him. It takes away choices, granted, some people don't like that, but ultimately for equal competition and a fair playing field, control tyre race is definitely the way to go. Yeah, I remember the days when we used to go to nationals and the bins would be full of wheels and tyre packets and everything, those days are long gone, hopefully they'll stay long gone. Then. Hopefully, yeah. I mean, back then when you had three different types of wheel, a hundred different types of insert for one specific tyre, and if you have one combination wrong, you are too slow, yeah. that's all gone now. So it's a lot cheaper for the general race. Okay, a man of your experience, obviously you know what wheel and tyre combination works well. Does that take away a little bit of the learning curve? Is it something now that the drivers don't need to, to learn? Yeah, I think it does. I think it does take away a certain amount of race craft and obviously race tuning ability. However, the people that really knew what to do were all sponsored anyway, 100%. And if you weren't, there was no way as a privateer financially how you could compete. It's like any form of motorsport. The more help you have, the easier it is to compete. This way, control tyre racing, definitely a lot easier for everybody. This is the top heat, so you've got some of the top drivers in the UK here. Looking across there, you've got car six going off first, that's Elliot Harper. Followed by, I believe, car eight, which is Glenn Doman. Then Ollie Jeffries, car two. These are the fastest three in qualifying so far and uh, where we'll see where they'll be at the end of five minutes of this, the final round of qualifying on day one. So Elliot away first, and then Glenn, and then Ollie. Followed by Kevin, Lee, Mark, Chris, Andy, Ben, and Glenn. All cars away cleanly, they're all racing the clock now. All very fast as you can see, this is the five cell modified class, the fastest touring car class in the UK. What the drivers are looking to do is to post a time faster than anybody else. That will establish the fastest time of the day. The cars will then be split into groups of 10. The fastest will be the coveted A final. 
and then B, C and D to follow. But everybody wants to be in the A and that's what this qualifying round is all about. All drivers keen to get a time in this last round of qualifying this afternoon as there's a possibility the track will be colder tomorrow and the only other runner qualifying in the morning could be a slower run. So they're pushing hard, trying to get a quick time. Cars bunching up a little bit as they go through the infield. All want to avoid each other. Lead swapping all the time between Glenn DeMann and Ollie Jeffries. Elliot's made a little mistake. Glenn made a mistake there. Ollie's now leading on the road. And coming round through the sweeper. That's a hot body cyclone of Ollie Jeffries, followed by the Corrali of Glenn DeMann, Kevin Brunston, and the X ray of Elliot Harper. Nobody can afford a mistake at this last, these last few seconds. We now got 30 seconds to go of this qualifying round. Ollie out front from Glenn. Still everything to play for. Still can't afford a mistake. This is the point where the batteries start to take their toll. Uh, they're starting to go what we consider what we call soft, as the battery gives its uh, last few amps. It's all about getting that fastest time and not making a mistake. Has Ollie done enough to get FTD? He's crossed the line, he hasn't finished yet. Last few corners for Ollie, has he done it? Looks from the scoreboard that Ollie took FTD. Okay, we're qualifying over now, we're moving into finals. This is the serious part of the weekend. The actual racing starts now. We've got a selection of drivers, starting with Jay Westwood, Chris Kurzweil, Ben Cosgrove, Adrian Bidwell and Andy Childs. We're going to walk around the track and they're going to give us a few pointers to what they'll be looking for in the final to help them achieve the fastest lap time and hopefully win their final. So off we go. Fast sweeping corner off the main straight. What's the line through here, guys? Just get it as tight as you can. Stay out wide, sweep in, hit the apex about halfway around, tend to drift out uh, towards to get the apex for the second sweeper. Is that full throttle? In a... Pretty much most of the time. If you get the line right and stay on the, the black line, then you'll get a full lap flat out. What's the consequences of kissing one of the bop dots on the way in? That fence. That big fence. Yeah. <laughs> and a lot of smiling. Yeah. <laughs> Okay then, for most cars we're flat out through this corner and then we're looking to break into the hairpin, Ben? Yeah, probably a little bit of break. We'll all be on cold tyres, fairly low grip, so it's going to be a bit of a slide and drift into this corner. This is where we're going to get all the, the people on full throttle from the back of the grid, kind of carrying the speed round, slightly warmer tyres. People at the front are going to be a bit colder tyres, so they're going to be a, a little bit cautious into here and it's going to get a bit messy. The art coming out of here with 19 is to carry as much corner speed as you can and just get the line and get back on the power as fast as you can. The stock here is just trying to really sort of carry as much corner speed as possible. We're going for more of a wider line to get them straight as straight as possible. But the actual way modified, you can hold things a lot tighter because now you've got the acceleration. You really are aiming for your key lines and say coming in tight, carrying everything uh, nice and tight. This section of the track here is actually one section I'm learning that I'm not exactly the fastest in. And I think this could be or is one of the key points of the track here to where you can make or break a fast lap. Now, one thing that we haven't spoken about is possible overtaking opportunities, guys. Is there any opportunity to sneak up the inside? Yeah, on the first on? corner will be a um, good overtaking chance on the first lap because everyone will be slower or faster depending on where they are. And then this corner, coming back around to the left into this hairpin, that's going to be the next next place you can probably if you're at the back of the grid you can maybe get up to fourth or fifth by the time you're in this corner yeah. and if you're in, on pole you're gonna have to make sure you can slide around with them um, getting the tires warm single file for here chris or? uh it's gonna be single file it's quite a fast flowing she came but quite tight you've got quite a lot of steering input it's catching quite a few people out if you haven't got a stable car on the second apex they tend to be lifting the wheel um, so we'll be looking out for that, people that have got loads of grips, as Ben says, from the back of the grid, nice hot tyres. If they try and drive too fast through here, they might slow down and maybe roll over with a bit of traction roll. If you come in through the chicane here, if you come too deep, you're then too far to the right and you're going to get pushed wide again, which then just basically just makes this in too much of an S. Whereas you really want to come to as tight as possible on this side, so you can just literally go from red dot to red dot, and that will give you the straightest line possible. With 19 in stock, through this sort of track would be like Adrian said earlier, carry as much corner speed as you can, get the sweeping lines. As long as the car's straight, coming out of the corners, you just go. 
You know, that's the, that's the secret around here to the fastest lap. Having done a, a 19 turn class last year, the, the main key of any controlled motor class is corner speed. Um, because they're all basically the same speed in a straight line, then if you carry more corner speed, you're going to get a faster lap time. This is very deceptive around here because like, with the stock guys, you've got to carry the speed, you'd probably be full throttle all the way around to this corner. Whereas a mod, just get tight, squirt it, but you can kind of hold full throttle and risk it. That's why people have been hitting the dots because they've been trying to carry the speed out. Yeah. Whereas with the mod class, you can just like feather it through this section. But again, that's where the confidence and the grip comes in. And in, again, first corner around this section, we're all going to be so tight there. This is going to be another nightmare just to kind of the power down into this corner it's going to be tight in the lead at the moment pole position man ollie jeffries followed by kevin bronson these two pull away just slightly from elliot harper at the moment oh uh, a grip roll there from Arthur's ollie just catching the safe by the grip roll you get grip roll basically because the car's not set up right for the track or it's just digging in or is it a Generally driving the, hard, the harder your car the more likely you are to grip roll yeah. but also depends on your tire treatment yeah the more grip your tyre treatment, the more chances of rolling. Right. Okay. So it's that balance between a fast lap and flipping over. You also find driving styles can affect grip roll. If you are quite an aggressive driver and change direction quickly, you'll throw the weight from left to right a lot faster and it'll tend to keep going and pick the inside wheel up. Once the inside wheel starts coming up, then you start getting the car rolling over. Coming to the sweeper, you really are getting a good stable car, but a car that's a little bit on its nose, so you just keep tucking it all the way around. You've got a car that's pushing, again, you've gone past the apex of this point here, so yeah, again, you've been more into this. You just really need a car that's quite on its nose and quite agile, and you just want to just, again, just night and tight, just coming out around onto the next corner. You know, if you're following someone, you can always see where they're a bit slower than where you are, and then you, if you can't get through them before then, you remember that for the next lap and just, Aim to get inside them, and especially on a track like this. It's, it's getting inside someone. It's confidence if you get inside, cars, yeah. If, you, if your car's working well, you can get inside them here. That's, that is the way you're going to pass someone. Okay. You're not going to pass anyone unless they make a mistake. Yeah. If you're just going to sit behind them, you're not going to get past them. You've got to get the car up inside them. Keep it as close and smooth as you can through this section, because if you go wide, you lose grip here and grip there for the straight, so you get no drive forwards. If you go tight, you hit a dot, and you've lost time. So this is just so critical to get right on the lap. Is that the most critical part of the track? I'd say it is. Especially getting the exit, exit out of there. We come from this corner to that corner. Because that corner tightens up on the exit. So we want to stay as close, but not clipping those dots. Because you clip those dots, you get pushed too wide on the exit. You, you clip a dot going through the middle of this corner, you lose a tenth, two tenths, and probably about five miles per hour down the straight. So somebody's close to you through here, this is where the, the mistakes and the passing will be in, into the sweep in the first corner, just by having a bad line. We're now talking to Keith Helmke, who's a racer and works in the industry. And uh, if I said elder statesman, I'm sure he wouldn't be too offended. <laughs> um, Keith, we're looking at touring cars this weekend. You've yeah. been around a long time. Um, how have you seen the touring car scene change you know, since, uh, since you've been racing? Since I started. Well, I mean, I started uh, 30 years ago now. Um, before touring cars, touring cars, for me actually, touring cars is quite new. I've probably been doing it about 10 years. Um, and it's changed dramatically, really, particularly in the last few years with the new brushless systems, the LiPo um, coming into the scene. You know, gone are the days where people really have to play around with motor brushes and stuff like that. I think for the newcomer now, it's actually a lot easier. You know, you can buy a motor, you can buy a LiPo battery, and you can pretty much not do a lot to your car other than set your car up. So I think for beginners, it's absolutely great. Great to um, encourage the youngsters in. You know, not that's too right. Much cost yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, buy a motor and go racing, which obviously going back a few years, and even now I'm still doing it with my car. You know, I'm still using brush motors. Um, so you're constantly working on your car and working on your motor. Um, so I think it's, I think it's good. I think the next few years is going to be quite challenging for for guys that are really into touring. And uh, touring cars still strong. Yeah. Still a strong class. Yeah. Yeah. Some, some people are saying that 
touring car is struggling a little bit, but I, I personally think that's because there's a lot of other options that I people think, can try. Yeah, I think there's a lot of classes of racing now. You know, as I say, I started in 12 scale racing, and that was almost the only class of racing other than a maybe eighth. And now there's a lot of expansion of classes. There's off road, there's gas, there's touring. So I think as a whole, the sport is very big yeah. um, and is increasing. But the touring car side, obviously, we've reached a point. Uh, to be honest, we've got 150 people here. You know, how bad's that? Yeah, you know, that'd be good. It's real yeah. good. Yeah. And are there still magic in the fingers? Those the I wouldn't gone? say there's any magic in the fingers, <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah, I'm still enjoying racing. I can't give up. Every every year I say, oh, I'm getting slower. Every time I drop a final, I go, oh, I'm getting slower. I want to give up. But, you know, you still come. You still enjoy it. You meet people you like, you know, guys you like. And it's nice to see the young guys coming through. You know, I mean, your son, for instance, yeah. you know, um, he's come from when I can remember him when he was a kid. He yeah. really, David Spashy, I knew David as a kid. Yeah. And you see these guys come through and they win championships, world championships. And it's good. Yeah. It's good fun because it's a real nice hobby. Races like this don't just happen, they take a great deal of organisation by a small band of people, in this case Maritime Racing Club. We're looking now at the race control, this is Ian Knight sat here, Ian's in charge of controlling all the races. Each car carries a transponder which sends a signal to a loop that's underneath the carpet and as you look at the computer in front of Ian you can see the positions of every car in qualifying during this run. This system also controls the time scale for the day, the time that the races stop and start, and if we have any problems or hold-ups, Ian can adjust that as we go. But basically, we like to set the computer to run, and it stays running for the rest of the day. Once qualifying's over, the computer will resort the drivers into finals, into the three different classes, and the A, B, C, and so on final down the list. So Ian, um, you're race director, you're obviously the man that's in control of what's going on on a minute by minute basis, but from a club's point of view, what's actually involved in getting this track down um, and from an organisation point of view, the whole meeting really? We have a eight strong committee that are very good. Um, we basically, all the equipment stays here and then we come up on the Friday night before on a two day meeting, lay it out. We also have 10 helpers from the club and we actually tape it all down and get the track set up and that's on the Friday. And then during the Friday evening, all the heat listings, so on and so forth, people booked in, get all the heat sorted. So when the drivers come up here, they hopefully seem a seamless race day. So everything's prepared for them just to get on with their racing, what they want to do. Um, obviously, this race now has become an annual event. Uh, how many years has this, been, this event been running now? This is five years for Carpet Wars. Um, we started in a smaller hall than this, but then we come here halfway through our first year and it's grown over the years to what you see now as what we believe is the largest track in Europe. Yeah, I think I would agree with the size of the track, certainly it is. Um, also, we, we know that uh, Maritime Racing has opened its, its, its new permanent track quite recently. Um, that's obviously a big step forward for the club and something you've been involved in as well? Yes, um, the club's been running now for uh, about 10 years and we've grown sufficiently enough to have the funds in the actual bank to actually build our own venue in the historic dockyard above the uh, Maritime Museum, um, which we rent from then. And it's one of the only permanent tracks in the UK where drivers from all abilities can come. They can also test. But it's just through the strength of the club and the club members that we managed to get this far. Yeah. I've actually seen the facility and it's very impressive and uh, obviously one of the best in the country. So uh, best of luck with that in the future. Best of luck with Carpet Wars. And uh, I'm pretty sure everybody's had a great day today. We're coming towards the end of the finals now. And and uh, on behalf of the drivers and everybody else, thank you very much for all your efforts. Thank you very much. The cars have come off from a qualifying run and we're going to check their eligibility for their class and they conform to the BRCA rules. Okay then, now the first thing we're checking here is the ride height. The ride height on these cars need to be five millimetres. It prevents them from any screws underneath the car scagging the carpet. The car's now weighed. That one's coming in at 15.29, which is well over the, the minimum weight. And now we need to check that the car is running in a stock class, that it has the correct motor, correct cells, and everything is uh, conforming under the bodywork. So now on this car we can see the motor 
and six cells. Everything looks to be okay. It's on the control tire, which everybody is running on. So I would assume this one is a pass. <laughs> Touring cars, a sport for all the family. Uh, we have here now a father and son combination. Most people who start racing touring cars come along with their dad. Um, in this case, the dad races as well. So we've got Aaron and Ian. Aaron, how long have you been RC racing? About two years. Is that touring cars all the time? Or? Yep. Yeah. And uh, what class are you racing this weekend? Stop. Okay. Your dad races as well. Obvious question, who's the quicker of the two, you or your dad? Me sometimes. Yeah. So it's pretty close most weeks then. Yeah. Enjoying it this weekend? Yep. Do you, do you do all the work on the car yourself or did your dad? I do a bit of it. I believe your other son races as well. Yeah, he does. He's, uh, he, he, he's several years older, but he's uh, a lot better. But unfortunately, his work commitments are now pushing him out of RC. Yeah. He's got us going to further studies. And as a father of a, of a lad that races, do you, do you find the sport, it's, it's a good sport for lads to get involved in as regards socially and, and sort of developing? You know. um, very much so. It, um, especially when you go on to the... the, uh, the, the National meetings like STCC, the SLCC, um, you're going to different venues, you're meeting different people all the time and over the course of the, the years that we've been doing it, we have met and made so many different friends. Um, the RC world is such a, uh, a friendly community, it doesn't matter whether they're the top racers or whether they're just starting up. Everybody's so willing to help yeah. the youngsters. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, some of the top guys will come along, see, notice that the youngsters having trouble, and straight away they're, they're in there helping. Yeah, that's, 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 that's very good. It's a very, very uh, friendly yeah. and almost a family. This meeting we have a number of top UK drivers, but we're joined for this weekend by Mark Fisher from Germany. Mark's part of the Corrali team and he's come over to, to race at this meeting. So Mark, what do you think of uh, the track and uh, the meeting so far? I think the track and the meeting is super nice and it's quite similar to Germany. But I think the German tracks are a little bit smaller. But I like the track, it's fast and yeah, I like it. Okay, how's it gone for you today? Has the Corrali been good? Yeah, it's good. It works okay, but at the moment, the driver is not so good, I think. Uh, perhaps you're suffering a bit of jet lag from Germany. <laughs> uh, it's only one hour, and I think it's like nothing. Okay. You're working with probably the biggest team here, with, um, with Chris and uh, everybody yeah. else. Is that helping, or are you helping them? Or? Yeah, we help us together, and yeah. I think we work great. Yeah, good, yeah. good. Okay, then. So, where did you finish today? Ooh, I think fifth or sixth. Oh, that's the, not so good. Uh, we still have another. But I have tomorrow. one more qualifying tomorrow. We all have one more tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mark. No problem. Cheers. You're welcome. We've got drivers at this meeting from all over the UK, and uh, we have representatives from the Isle of Wight. So we've got Andy here, who's come across with oh, yeah. a number of uh, drivers. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's what sort a... of um, how does this compare to the sort of racing you do? Oh the well, it's, it's just so much bigger. The whole sort of track event and the, well, the event, the scale of the thing, it's just so much bigger. I mean, the hall we race on probably uses four or five lengths of this carpet, and you're looking at 12 lengths of this carpet, so it's like double the size track. So it really does make a bit of a difference. Somebody was telling me earlier that you only race stock on the. Yeah, we only tend to race stock. We have yeah. tried 19 turn classes, but it's just too fast for our size of our track. Yeah. where it's a bit tighter and twistier yeah. so you can't quite you know get used to the speed so we stick with the stock motors yeah. and the stock motors are pretty fast these days uh, with the batteries you know and you, you guys are doing well i believe one of yeah one of our guys has done really well he's got yeah. an ftq in the stock class yeah. and a few of the others are we're there and thereabouts in some of the c finals i think uh, so some you, guys have had problems obviously yeah. but you know <laughs> so you definitely be back again um, I think so, yeah. yeah. yeah Br bring some more drivers with you next year? Well, perhaps? there's about 20 of us come up this year, yeah. so uh, I think we had a pretty good turnout yeah. from yeah. our club. I mean, Last person to leave, shut the light off, was it? <laughs> yeah, something like that back <laughs> home, yeah, yeah. Right, so away they go. Keep it nice and clean, gentlemen, as they come through. Not too bad through the first corner. Just a few hitting block dots, just keep it nice and tidy. You know what you should be doing, but still the race leader, the pole position man uh, in the lead is... Dave Reese, followed by Richard King and Mark Sadler. 
Solly up further back down the field, but car one from 18 on. followed. By the light blue car, Richard King at the moment, and then we have Mark Sadler in third, that's your pink car, so as they come round in front of race control again, Dave making a mistake on the block dot, let's Richard King catch up. Car two in the blue, Fastest white sky five. blue as they just go down the straight, still Dave though, keeping his lead from Richard King at the moment, and then Mark Sadler, the pink car, just coming round in front of race control, that's your one, two, three as they come round onto the straight. Richard pushing hard on Dave, Dave not making a mistake, closing all the doors at the moment on him as they go back round into the infield just in front of the rostrum. The pink, the purple car at the moment, your race leader, Dave Reese, Fastest followed by Richard King. Richard trying to make Fastest all the moves, Dave shutting all the doors. As you see Richard go round the corners, he's weaving side to side, but Dave keeping all the tight corners closed on him. But still Dave leading from Richard King, and then we have Mark Sadler. Mark making a bit of time up while these two battle away. Richard making a bit of a mistake on a block dot, but they're down straight, and he's your purple car leading from the sky blue tail. Richard King. Richard anchors on the brakes, not to catch up with Dave and hit the back of him, but Mark Sadler now, the pink car, trying to make a move on Richard as they go around the corner onto the straight. But still, Dave Reese keeping the lines, keeping in the lead from Richard King, then Mark Sadler, and then Andy James. But these are your one, two, three, just coming past race control at the moment. That's the purple car, the sky oh, blue, and then the pink cars. They go back down onto the straight. Nip and tuck between these three drivers at the moment as they come back along into the infield as they're coming up to a back marker at the moment. Mark going through, Richard gets round in. Richard tries to tuck on the inside, just doesn't manage As they go down the straight, it's second and third at the moment for the battle. But Mark Sadler has taken second from Richard King as they come round in the infield on the rostrum. But Mark, Dave Reese leading still. Richard trying to get all the corners, but it's the block that puts him back just slightly off of Mark Sadler. But still Dave Reese leading from Mark Sadler and then Richard King as they come round back in front of race oh, control no, once again. Back markers going on the straight. You have got the race leaders coming up on you at the moment. Dave pulling away just slight, slightly now from Mark Sadler. Dave making a big mistake on one of the blood dots, let's Mark catch up, so now oh, Mark's on the game. He's got a sniff of the lead from uh, Dave now as they back go both onto the straight. There is some back markers in front of them, please keep out of the way if you can, back markers. You've got the purple car, which is the race leader, and then the pink car, which is second, thank you. Oh, no, and the light blue car, that. thank you very much. So they go on the straight. Mark tries to suck in on the inside for Dave, doesn't actually make it. He's carrying more corner speed than Dave, but Dave, he's shutting the doors on Mark quite well at the moment. So as they're back in front of the race control, once again still Dave Reese leading from Mark Sadler and then Richard King in third. That's two minutes left of this race to go ladies and gentlemen as they come up to another back marker. Car 10, you've got the race leaders coming up on you, please move over, thank you. Also the pink car and the sky blue car if you can let them go as well. But still Dave Reese leading from Mark Sadler and then we have Richard King. Back marker goes wide again for Mark, if you can do the same for the blue car please. Oh, but no, Dave Reese still right. leading, uh, pulling away now from Mark after they've had uh, the back marker between them. But still Dave Reese leading, coming around onto the infield. Around the corner. Mark's oh, had the no, trying to chase him right. down there. There's not long left to go in this race, about a minute ten to go. Still Dave Reese, your pole position man, leading from Mark Sadler, who was third on the grid. Gets the block dot, puts him slightly back a bit more, and also. Richard King in third, that's a light blue car just going down the straight. As we work further down the grid, we've got Dan, then Jay Westwood, then Stuart Bevan, Andy, James, Mark Young, Keith Elke and Chris. Clear, clear track at the moment in front of Dave, but uh, Richard King now trying to make a move on Mark Sadler for second and third as they come round in front of the uh, transponder table, then onto the straight. That's your second and third place, gentlemen. Still Dave leading, though, from Mark Sadler, the pink car, and then Richard King trying to make another move on Mark as they come round in front of race control. Tries to duck in on the corner, doesn't make it. Mark still pulling away on the infield from Richard, but Richard now seems to have the bit between his teeth as they come round again in front of the rostrum. Richard has definitely got the pace through that section, but Mark keeps pulling away as he goes out onto the straight, but still Dave with three seconds to go, this could be a win for Dave as they come round, this is the call for the last lap. Mark Sadler in second, then Richard King in third as they come over then. It's a win for Dave Reese, and second to Mark Sadler, and third to Richard King. Well, we've seen some great racing this weekend, and as normally at the end of a race meeting, we have a prize giving, as you can see going on behind me now. 
Uh, the top three in each class receive a trophy in this case and uh, they're currently being distributed by Ian Knight, the race director and a representative of the sponsors. It's not all about winning and losing but it's a sport so you will get winners and losers but hopefully you've seen over the weekend that this is a, a very much a family sport and it's a lot about enjoying yourself and having a good day. We've handed out the trophies and we've got the three winners from each class. One place better than you did last year, you obviously pleased with that? Yeah, it's good. Yeah. Better than last year, so. Yeah. Yeah. Finals went well. Last final you seemed to be well in control. Yeah, it was okay, just didn't make any mistakes the first one, so we had big traction roll, but can't really do anything about that. So. Good. It looked good towards the end, mate. Well done. Okay. Winner of the 19 turn class. Yeah, uh, from third on the grid. Absolutely. So obviously delighted with that. I was, yeah, I was a bit disappointed not to get TQ, but hey ho. Yeah. yeah, come good in the end. Yeah. And with a car that's uh, fairly new to the electric touring car scene, uh, the new Serpent. Yeah, absolutely. We've, we've spent a lot of time and um, development in the car and it's coming on really well now. And hopefully this is the start of many more wins this year. Okay, well, we'll be looking out for it. Thanks a lot. Excellent. Finally, one of our friends from the Isle of Wight who's come yeah. across, going back uh, with some cash and uh, a nice yeah. big trophy. So obviously you're delighted with your trip across. Yeah, good weekend overall, yeah. really, yeah. yeah. So. Yeah, I saw you in one of the finals. How did you get in any other two? Yeah, I got all three in the so end. So a clean yeah. sweep then. So, so yeah, yeah, and FTD, so, yeah, so you, couldn't you, have been better, really. It couldn't have been any better than that. Right. Brilliant, but yeah. It was, it was good to think you came, you, know, you came over and it was well worth it. So Definitely. Well, hopefully we'll see you back next year to defend it. Definitely, yeah. Well done. Thanks, Thanks very, very much. much. Well, that's it from the Carpet Wars World Cup two-day meeting. Um, we hope you've enjoyed the video and you've learnt a lot and you've picked up a few tips from some of the top drivers and enjoyed some of the racing action.